But let's discuss Jimmy effing Butler. And it Jimmy Butler is an interesting one, right? How would you describe him? And part of me wanted to say, well, is Jimmy Butler, uh, is he the Kurt Schilling of basketball? Now, the problem when I say Kurt Schilling now, and to anybody who actually knows what I'm talking about in, in baseball, is that Kurt Schilling was a very good pitcher for the most part in his career. He was a spectacular postseason pitcher. Right? Postseason pitcher. Um, but but I've, I've kind of circled back to something else and to someone else. So Jimmy Butler, and granted, it's just one game, but he's had a couple of these incredible uh, breakout games before. And, I mean, he just had, he had a couple in the Bucks series, right? So I was trying to find, all right, who's the parallel? And you're going to have to stick with me on this one because the one difference is the guy he parallels actually did have one great regular season where he led the league in scoring. Was was or right, let's start with this is Jimmy Butler a great shooter well statistically no he, he shot 35% from 3 this year but the previous 2 years he shot the previous 3 years he shot 24 24 and 23% from 3 point range it's crazy right uh, he shot a better percentage from 2 this year after an entire career under 50%. This is the first year he shot 54%. Um, he averaged 23 points a game in the regular season. Now, the postseason, a little different, right? He's become a dominant postseason player. And you're like, wow, how is that, how is that even possible? I mean, think about it. So far, right, Eastern Conference Finals, obviously, at 35 last night. Eastern Conference semis, he averaged 24 and a half. Eastern Conference, the, in the, the first series against Milwaukee, he averaged 37.6 points, six rebounds, and four and a half assists. While the field goal percentage is down, the three point percentage is up. Like he is a completely and thoroughly dominant, like, you know, in that first series against the Milwaukee Bucks, he shot 44% from three, 59 from two. Now, granted, against the Knicks, he only shot 11% from three, a little bit of regression towards the mean. But the fact is this. Jimmy Butler is not crazy fast or athletic, but makes crazy fast athletic plays when needed. He's not a great shooter, but are you really going to leave him open? He's not a great ball handler, but he doesn't really lose the ball. He doesn't have great moves, but he finds a way to get to his spots and gets his shots. He's not what you would call the world's greatest defender, but he makes great defensive plays. Like he does things. He has what I think you would term competitive greatness. That's Dwayne Wade. You're like, no, 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 no. Dwayne Wade, Dwayne, like Dwayne Wade was not a good shooter. There's no, he, for his career, and remember, the last couple years of his career, obviously, um, he actually shot the ball a little bit better. But he shot 29% from three for his career. He had a couple seasons of over 50 from the field. Um, he became a better free throw shooter, but he was always kind of mid-70s to maybe 80. He was never a 90% free throw shooter. And with the exception of the of the the shackless LeBronless years, and he had that one year where he led the league in scoring, like he's about 22, 23 a night guy. But in an NBA Finals or an NBA Playoffs, and I know when they played the the Mavericks when he won his first title with Shaq, he got every call. I get it. But in the NBA Playoffs, are you going to leave him open? The stats say make him shoot threes. Is that really what you want to do? All right. I mean, go back and look and his stats until he aged out, until he got to his, you know, he had the, the knee problems late. But for the most part, he was better 
in the postseason in the biggest moments than he was in the regular season. And Dwayne Wade is not crazy athletic. He doesn't have a great handle. Like Jimmy Butler, he kind of only goes right. I'm not saying he's not in like layman's terms or for you and me, a great athlete, but in comparison to the elites, like I saw people comparing him to Kobe Bryant, like that's a bunch of crap. Kobe Bryant was one of the 10 best players in the NBA, five best players in the NBA for years. Jimmy Butler has never been. And for the most part, Dwayne Wade, he had that one great finals run and he did get a ton of calls. But he was really, really good. But when the chips were on the line, when things mattered, he was amazing. And that's who Jimmy Butler is. It just so happens he plays for the same team. Like, that's who he's embodying. That's who he's embodying. Here's Jimmy Butler after the win. Still don't care what none of y'all think. Um, We don't care if you pick us to win. We never have. We never will. We know the group of guys we have in this locker room. We play basketball the right way, knowing that we always got a chance. More than anything, we're staying together through the good and through the bad. It is a game of runs. Um, I feel like we did a a really good job on a defensive end. We shared the ball on offense. Got a win, but um, that's not enough for us, and we want to get another one in two days. Here's uh, Celtics head coach Joe Mazzula when he was asked if his team was prepared for the game. You said they played harder than you in the third quarter. That's what they do. They play harder than their opponent. How are you guys unprepared for that? And we, we were prepared. We played harder than them in the first half, and then they outplayed us for one quarter. So we were prepared for it. We had the right mindset heading into the game. But that, that, no, no, no. We had the right mindset heading into the game. We played harder than they did, and we were prepared, and we did a great job. The third made all the difference, right? It did, but we were prepared, and then we let go of the rope. And so there's two storylines here. It's one, we were ready to play. And we had a great job executing on both ends of the floor in the first half. And it's about the consistency of they're going to continue to play. And so we have to be prepared um, for when we do outplay them, that they're going to respond and we have to respond. And so we were prepared. We just let go of the rope. That was really, really defensive. Really, really defensive. And when you say we were prepared and we executed and we lacked consistency, that's Joe Missoula putting it on the guys. And, and I understand, like, Joe Missoula, because he's 34 and hadn't been a head coach before, anytime they lose, people point to him. And anytime they win, you point, to, you point to the players, right? That's where we are right now. But that's not a great answer. There's just no way anyone could think that's a great answer. Jimmy Butler is Dwayne Wade. And the Celtics aren't in trouble because they can't still win four games in the series. It feels like they're in trouble because (laughs) their coach is taking zero blame and getting super defensive, even if accurate. Let let me just say this one thing, though, about Joe Mazzulla. I don't know who answered that, asked that question, but it's it's a horrible question because it, it has a trigger word. Do you know what the trigger word is there, Jason Stewart? Yeah. Prepared. Right? I'm going to play it for you one more time. Okay? Take, take a listen to this. Take a listen to the question because here's what a trigger word is. It no longer became about, you know, it no longer became about anything other than that word. Were you prepared? He said they played harder than you in the third quarter. That's what they do. They play harder than their opponent. How are you guys unprepared for that? And we, we were prepared. We played harder than them in the first half, and then they outplayed us for one quarter. So we were prepared for it. We had the right mindset heading into the game. But that, that, no, 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 we had the right mindset heading into the game. We played harder than they did, and we were prepared, and we did a great quarter. job. Right? It's all about prepared. It's all, all about prepared. Instead of just asking a question like, Joe, what happened in the third quarter? You know? How did they, how, why, why do you think, if he says they outplayed us, why do you think that is? Follow up with that. What can you do in the future so that you match their intensity coming out of halftime? But instead, it was a really unfair question and he took the bait and the answer became defensive because it became all about that one word, unprepared. 